Hello and welcome. I am Anthony Pereira and I run our Family Law Unbundled program. So today we're going to focus on less on the behind the scenes of what NBL does and more on what the volunteer experience is going to look like and how you can make a difference. So what does the volunteer experience look like? I'd like to start off by saying as little as two hours can make a difference. And I say two hours because that includes time that you're emailing me and scheduling, as well as the time that you're preparing to meet with the client. And then the actual consultation will last about an hour. Your time for the most part is spent um, conducting these one hour consultations, giving legal advice, explaining the person's rights and what to expect. Uh, the types of cases will all be family law. It could be a divorce or an allocation of parental responsibilities case, but the actual facts can differ. Um, some of our applicants haven't filed yet. Some have already filed and are waiting for the permanent orders. Some need mediation. When appropriate, we encourage our volunteers to draft motions or complete the JDF forms for our applicants. Um, it's much easier while in person and we're gonna be talking about the remote assistance a bit later, um, but while in person, I can print off the JDF forms for you. Um, I can do some quick legal research if that's necessary. Um, and then you're helping these applicants fill out these forms and it makes a huge difference for them. Sometimes our volunteers will go above and beyond and provide limited or full representations for our applicants. And if you want to um, represent an applicant after the initial consultation, it's as simple as just letting me know. Uh, we had one client who came to an agreement but did not sign it, um, and the court wanted to make sure that it was an agreement, so they ordered that the client sign it. Um, but because of COVID, they weren't able to obtain a copy of the order. And our volunteer entered a limited entry of appearance, got a copy of that order, gave it to our applicant to sign, filed it for our applicant and withdrew. So it's just a couple of hours of work for our volunteer, but it made a mountain of difference for our applicant. When you volunteer with Metro Volunteer Lawyers, you'll have the opportunity to prepare. You're gonna give, be given the client's name, applic um, their names for complex checks, um, once the conflicts are cleared, you're gonna be given a case file. That case file is gonna include information about the, the client and the adverse party. Um, it's gonna include a questionnaire completed by Colorado Legal Services. It's gonna include the register of action if a case has been filed and relevant court filings, any motions that are pending, um, any court deadlines. Um, and with Family Law Unbundled, it's also gonna include a case summary, which is about a half page summary um, of the key facts and information that uh, you'll need to prepare to meet with the client. You'll also be able to um, determine your schedule as far as when you meet with the client. Um, when we're doing in-person clinics, we reserve uh, the courtroom for a particular day um, or a room in the courthouse for a particular day. Um, but if you're available any time during that day, uh, we could schedule you to meet with your clients at that time. While doing it remotely, I reach out to you and you give me some days over the next couple weeks that you're available and I reach back out to the client to see when they're available and I'll schedule a particular time that works with both your schedules. Um, a little bit of the behind the scenes is that we've had about a 90% turnout rate so missed appointments do happen, but it's not common. Uh, it's important as well that if you conduct the consultation um, and you determine that this client needs full representation, that you let us know. Um, if they can need full representation because the case is too complicated, the client's not prepared to meet, um, to represent themselves. Uh, the other side has an attorney that's gonna take advantage of them. There's a lot of reasons why a client might need full representation. Um, I'm trying to make that determination, but you as a volunteer that's meeting with the client might have a lot more insight that you could provide me and let me know that this person um, needs a full attorney. 
Um, and while we can't guarantee that we can find the attorney, we could definitely start the process as far as looking for that volunteer. So Family Law Unbundled was designed with early resolution in mind. Um, what that means for you is that uh, a lot of the consultations that you're gonna be giving are helping a client prepare for mediation. Or if they're unaware that they have a mediation requirement, it'll be informing the client that they are required to mediate and walking them through what that's gonna look like. NVL has a panel of pro bono mediators. So if they don't already have mediation scheduled and they might be interested in that, let me know and I can look for a volunteer mediator to uh, help this client out with their case. Um, and then I'll probably schedule them with, for another appointment to help prepare for that mediation as well. So you can't have a presentation nowadays without talking about COVID. Um, while we are uh, working remotely um, currently, all of our uh, consultations are done uh, remotely. That means it's usually by phone. Um, it can be by Zoom. Um, a lot of our applicants are unfamiliar with Zoom, don't have the technology, don't have the technological expertise, or they choose not to want to do it by Zoom. But some of our volunteers and clients have met through Zoom. Um, and we want to provide a safe way for our volunteers to give back. Um, once we schedule you, if it is a telephone consultation, it's up to you. Um, you can either call the client or the client can call you. Um, a benefit of the uh, you calling the client is the client's not giving your contact information. And you can even block your number using star six seven, which makes your number come up as um, restricted. And this helps reinforce that's a one-time consultation. Um, a benefit of having the cl client call you is that you can keep working up until the point that the client calls. And if the client does miss um, their appointment, it you, you just work right through that hour anyways. Um, so it is up to you. Um, and once we resume in-person clinics, it's up to you as far as if that's something that you're comfortable with. And if you wanna know whatever safety precautions that we are taking when we, when we resume in-person clinics, we'd be happy to share that information with you. So I encourage you to get involved with Family Law Unbundled. As I said at the beginning, as little as two hours can make a huge difference. Uh, we at Metro Volunteer Lawyers are only as good as our volunteers. And this slide has my contact information, so I'm gonna leave it up a little bit. But at this time, I'm also gonna introduce um, the people we have on the Zoom call with me. We have uh, Andy Hart and Steve Cook. Hello. Um, they are both uh, MVL board members for our advisory boards. And we also have one of our regular volunteers, Angela Boykins. Um, she volunteers with several of our programs, including Family Law on Bundle. Uh, Anthony, what can the a volunteer attorney expect in terms of support if they volunteer with this program? Yeah, so if we're doing in-person clinics, NBL staff will always be present. Um, if, if any questions come up, if there's any particular strange issues, um, we can print the JDF forms in person. Um, for the most part, a lot of the support is done beforehand. Um, we're making sure that you are able to prepare to meet with a particular client um, with that case file. Um, MBL staff is always available if anything comes up with the case. Um, and if the case becomes too complicated for uh, a single consultation, um, we're not expecting our volunteers to take that case. We're expecting uh, the case to come back to MBL and us to look at what resources we have for the client. So there's no um, expectation that the the volunteer takes on the full case when they do a consultation through this program. Along those same lines though, is it, would a volunteer have the option of taking on a full representation case if, it, if they were bonded with a client or they're otherwise called to do it? 
Yes, we always love to hear that a volunteer met with a client and they um, were willing to take on the case as a full representation case. Um, there is no reason why we can't assign as a full representation case or if you wanted to provide limited representation for just a particular issue, like I'll help them out through mediation. Um, that is fine as well. We could work with, with the volunteers as far as what they're expecting. But, but just to be 100% clear, that's not expected if a volunteer with an unbundled program. It's not expected of the volunteer attorney. And I would go one step further is that our clients, we inform them that that's what, not what they're going to get. They're meeting with the attorneys just for this consultation um, and the attorney's obligation is completed. And there's no further um, obligation from either the attorney or the client um, as far as attorney-client relationship after that. If they need additional assistance, let the client reach out to us um, and not that volunteer attorney again. Anthony, can you describe how the uh, Family Law and Bundle Program uh, integrates with the other programs that MVL has to offer? Yeah, so Family Law Unbundled is a program that's a bit in the middle as far as the level of service that we provide. Um, our Family Law Core Program is for uncontested cases um, that haven't been filed yet. So if nothing's been filed, we might start it with the Family Law Core Program. But if that case becomes contested, or the other side hires an attorney, that case is gonna to go to me to see what we could do as far as providing consultations. Now, if the case it has a lot of domestic violence or if there is a lot of complications, there's a military retirement account or things like that, that might cause it to be a little more difficult to unbundle, we're gonna make that case into a full referral case and I will look to find a full referral attorney. Um, this program also relies heavily on our mediation program. Um, so in addition to um, working with the client, we're also working with volunteer mediators to meet with the client um, as far as getting their early resolution. So I assume you're looking for and would always accept people willing to participate as a mediator? Yes, mediation mediators are very needed. Um, the, our mediation program, Family Law Unbundled is relatively new and our mediation program is even newer. Um, we're trying to expand that panel of volunteer mediators. Uh, if they wanna do it in person or remotely, um, we have clients in need of both. And can they contact you to get uh, lined up with volunteering as a mediator as well? Absolutely, um, it'd be the same contact information. Just let me know if you're interested in Family Law Unbundled, mediation or any of our programs. I can at least get you in the right going in the right direction. Do the volunteers need to have experience or have had experience as family law attorneys in order to volunteer with this program? Not with all of our programs, but with this program, um, you kind of need some family law um, knowledge and expertise in order to provide the best service that we can. With that being said though, we do have um, mentor mentee opportunities. Um, available. Uh, it's usually shadowing another attorney at these clinics and learning what it's going to be like. Um, we have had volunteers that don't practice in family law um, exclusively um, or regularly, but they have uh, that basic knowledge, volunteer at and give legal advice um, once they've established the institutional knowledge and um, the knowledge base. And if they have anything comes up that they're not ready for, um, and a weird question, maybe about bankruptcy and family law or something like that. Uh, I can either find another volunteer to meet with that client on that more complex issue, or I can do a mentor mentee relationship with them. Um, but there is some base level of uh, knowledge that is required for my program. In this virtual world that we're living in right now, is there, are there, opportunities to shadow or to observe uh, a consultation that perhaps another volunteer is doing if, some, if somebody's new to the program? Yes, um, there are opportunities. Um, we have had uh, our intern shadow and our other volunteer shadow. Um, they're usually done through Zoom. 
Um, I haven't done any phone ones yet, but that doesn't mean that that's not a possibility in the future. Um, I have set up conference calls um, for attorneys and clients to both call into. Um, and there's no reason why that doesn't necessarily mean that another volunteer attorney who's shadowing can't uh, join that. When I have done shadows before, I've obviously contacted the volunteer attorney that's um, writing the bulk of the, the consultation. And I also make sure that the client is aware that there might be um, someone else shadowing as well. Anthony, access to justice is obviously a, a cornerstone of what MVL is about. Can you talk a little bit about the, the people who are being served through your program? Everyone that Metro Volunteer Lawyer serves is at um, is low income. Um, that's under 200% of the federal poverty guidelines. Um, these are people that have a lot going on in their lives um, and adding a family law case while taking care of your kids while trying to find work is a lot. So those are the types of people that we um, typically, typically see are people either out of work or working when they can. Um, most of our cases are pre-decree or all of our cases are pre-decree. Um, most of our cases are with families as well, children involved, um, but not all of them. Um, so we have a wide variety of case, but these are low income people that um, cannot afford an attorney. Uh, Anthony, where can volunteers or potential volunteers go for more information about this program? Yeah, the easiest spot um, would be Metro Volunteer Lawyers website. So you can just go to uh, denbar.org slash MVL um, and you can find more information about Family Law Unbundled and all of our programs. There's also a sign up form right there and you can select which programs that you're interested in. Um, if email works better for you, you can always email me as well. Um, but I do encourage you to check out our website. There's a lot of resources there um, beyond just this. Uh, good morning, Angela. Thank you so much for coming uh, and joining us this morning to talk about the unbundled clinic um, that Anthony is heading up. It's a relatively new program and I'm as a board member, I'm pretty excited about the possibilities. Um, uh, can you please uh, briefly describe just why you have gotten involved with Metro Volunteer Lawyers and with this program in particular? I believe that it's really important that everybody has legal representation. So Metro Volunteer Lawyers um, programs allow people that can't afford attorneys, to be able to have attorneys and be and get represented in the cases that they have uh, pending. What do you think the most important thing, Angela, for our volunteers uh, who may be looking at family law and bundled? Uh, what's the most important thing for them to know before they get started? I think the most important thing for them to know is that they have a choice as to what type of services that they can take advantage of. So they don't have to have full representation. They can have representation just for a single item if they need assistance with filing the case or they need assistance with just going through mediation. So that's, I think, the most important thing that they know that they have a choice. That it isn't just going in and having full representation because not every person involved in a case wants or needs full representation. So this gives them a, a, a choice. That's what I think is the most important thing. Angela, when you're taking on a case, uh, do you do anything to um, talk to the client about what expectations they might have or to temper their expectations or just generally have a conversation with them about the process? Um, I do. So usually there's, I give an initial consultation just like I would if it were um, a regular paying client. I meet with them either right now it's on Zoom, but um, regardless, I meet with them ahead of time, um, discuss what their case with them, allow them to answer any questions, and then I try to make sure that their expectations are real. Um, so I try to control uh, their expectations so they don't go into court or into the case 
thinking that they can receive something out of the case that they can't receive. Sometimes um, clients go into court thinking that they have all the control, that they can just show up and tell the judge, this is what I want, and the judge is going to award it. So, you know, I think it's very important to manage the client's expectations, as well as to explain to them the process. So I usually talk to them about what happens with the case, every aspect of the case, um, and then when they go to court as well, you know, I start with, you know, you show up, you get sworn in, and then we go through everything that happens. So that way they're familiar. You want the client to be familiar. So when they walk in, I think it makes them a little less nervous and a, a little bit um, more comfortable with the system. Angela, tell me, how, how do you think uh, the assistance that you provide and that other volunteers may provide um, impacts the client uh, as they were going through this process at other portions by themselves, but having met with you and having part of their case handled uh, with your assistance, how does that impact the clients moving forward? Um, it has a positive impact on them. For one, they know that they're not going through this alone. Most of the time when you have issues in a case and, and you can't afford an attorney or you can't afford full representation, then the client typically believes that they're in it all by themselves. So by meeting with the attorneys, we let them know that we're in it for as long as they need us to be in it. So if it's for just one part of it, or if they have full representation, that will be there, that they can call us, that they can contact us, that we will be with them until the, the completion of the case record. Um, Angela, what would you like uh, volunteers who are thinking uh, about getting involved in this program to know? Um, I would want them to know that they're doing a great service to the community, for one, to the people. And you, know, you have to look at people individually. And, you know, most of these people really didn't have much of an expectation of having a lawyer. So I think it's a really important that we give back as attorneys. I mean, right now, Colorado doesn't have um, a mandatory pro bono, but I think every year we hope that it's gonna happen because people, you know, we've had the benefit of becoming attorneys. And I think that it's very important that we give back. So I would just say, you know, it changes lives. Volunteering, helping people, it changes our lives. And I think that's really why it's important that we all do it. Yeah. That's it. And that was a wonderful answer, uh, Angela. Yeah. Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. I think um, I, I have some colleagues that I run into uh, who, you know, I know they're busy. I'm busy. I, I can feel their busyness as well. Um, but they just don't seem to have that extra motivation to uh, give back. And uh, hopefully your statement can motivate a couple of them. Uh, to, to get involved because I really do appreciate um, that kind of sentiment. We're all in this together. We hear that a lot nowadays. Right. I mean, it's always been true. Um, and now we're maybe, maybe just starting to realize that. So. Right. I think so. Cool. Thank you, Anthony, for your presentation. Um, also, thank you, Steve, and especially thank you to Angela for talking about the program. And, and I really appreciate uh, passion in this. Um, and also thank you to all the people who have volunteered with this program and all the people who are going to volunteer with this program. Thank you.